Ah, Pixar shorts. You always confused me when I saw them as a kid in cinemas. Silly old me was always thinking that I'd somehow sat down in the wrong movie. I thought I was supposed to be watching Monsters Inc, not some birds movie. But nevertheless, as I've grown to expect these movies more and more, confident with the knowledge that there is still a feature film alongside it, I've grown to appreciate these shorts more and more. Oftentimes being more cinematic and artistically sound than the full runtime project seen elsewhere. The format of shorts alone has such great competition for emotive and compelling storytelling, and having it be done by one of the masterclass animation studios in the business is nothing short of glorious for us viewers to enjoy. And clearly, Pixar knows what they're doing. Not only having one of the longest histories of animation short films dating back to 1984 with the adventures of Andre and Wally B, but also through their accolades. Almost every single one of the fabled Pixar shorts has been nominated for the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. And many, many of them have actually won. Those are Oscars, as much as animation kind of gets an asterisk and a seat away from the main event of the Academy Awards. But still, over on this Change series of ours, we typically pick the most notable scene of a movie to break down shot by shot. Which begs the question in this case, which is the best Pixar short? The one worth talking about and dissecting as fully as we can. Well, I'll make the lineup a little more easy to digest. Red's Dream, Knick Knack, The Blue Umbrella, and Lava didn't even get a nomination. And out of the remaining 16, Partly Cloudy was shortlisted, but not nominated. From there, 10 shorts got that Oscar nomination, but didn't win. In the end, five out of the 20 actually won full Oscars. Those being For the Birds, Jerry's Game, Piper, Tiny Toy, and Bow. An interesting lineup, to be honest. Spread all across release dates, so it's not just technology good to the 90s. Anyway, you've seen the thumbnail. Out of the five, the short I want to talk about is Pixar's short Bow, releasing alongside The Incredibles 2. And the theme is all about family, or more specifically, parental relationships and the rises and falls of life. <laughs> Just a tad more emotive than big bird and always small birds. We begin during the logos as we hear the audio work starting up early, giving us the sounds of bowls being set down and rhythmic thumping, before fading up on our protagonist, an unnamed Chinese woman, rolling dough into shape with a shot that keeps her face strictly out of shot. Only her hands are relevant, so only the hands will be shown as it's ringed out, split, and chopped into buds. It's a cooking montage, and all the focus is on the food. Side-ish on for the chopping, so you can see pieces contrasted against the knife. And then from a bird's eye view to see how spread flat they become under the roller. It's a craft our protagonist is clearly very adept at. This is an expert at work. As we now switch to her perspective, rolling together the perfect bow bun, stuffed with filling or filled with stuffing as she coils through the dough to seal the whole thing together. Hands stretched out like a literal display out for the audience to observe. Bam, it's the perfect bow bun. As we now match cut to later in the cooking process, bow bun remaining in the same place in the frame as they're steamed, and all of it presented in this realistic tone, minus the stylizations of the character designs. The textures are realistic, the cooking process is mimicking reality, and it's all to have us interpret this piece as a bit more grounded in reality. This is our world as far as this short is telling us so far. But with the cooking finalized, as we just have to wait for the heat to do the rest, we see for the first time the rest of our protagonist and the rest of the world she resides in, beyond just her arms. It's Toronto in Canada, since the CN Tower is so apparent, set in real world locations against realistic shaped houses. As the title card pops up in the corner and our Chinese character catches some fresh air out of the window, Bao having the double meaning of both the food and the Chinese term meaning treasure, commonly used to describe your kid as something precious to you. And her being a Chinese Canadian will also become relevant to the theming as this is a tale about family, an immigrant family, which opens up to new stories and perspectives we hadn't got to hear of too much on the big screen. Especially during the timing of this short five years ago in 2018. Not to mention this is the first Pixar short to have a female director as Pixar were taking strides on the diversity front to tell some new interesting stories. And so now we get to see other aspects of her life beyond the cooking craft. The father archetype is sat watching TV, barely paying attention to her in his spot of comfort. While she is serving her fabled bow buns, it's clearly the common routine of the day. 
more highlighted by how they have a slow cooker in the front room too. But he's not dismissive. With a light tap on the arm, he'll happily turn his head and get started on breakfast. Mm. Mm. Though at the same time, while her bow may be great, the husband too has little time on his hands and soon scampers off to work. It's a lonely life for this wife, and she's struggling with the loneliness. Time for the Pixar madness to kick in. <laughs> the premise of the short, one of her bow buns has magically come alive. And though there is no dialogue apart from muffled Mandarin TV mumblings, this child needs to scream. Another classic shorts trope to make the cinematic universal. We all understand this language, so we can all enjoy it ourselves. I love as well how giant and Pixar-y the woman's eyes suddenly get when she's shocked. But it's a miracle of existence, and as our protagonist steps up on the table and leans over, we see from her point of view this new baby, fussing and cooing much like one, and quickly growing features with time. For the first time in perhaps a while, it has returned the light in her eye, as she is practically glistening as a reaction. And so naturally, as the woman picks up this bow bun, she is completely enamoured by how cute it is. The camera remains static while looking inside of the pot, but slightly downwards, like a parent looking down at its child. And while being picked up, the focus remains fixed at a certain point that the bow child is pulled into. As if in that moment, nothing else is important other than this child, whilst starting from a place of confusion and bewilderment as our vision is blurred at first. And there's the money shot. Of course you'd cuddle up closely to something as cute as that. Just be careful, it is made of squishy dough. Look, it's already warping. <laughs> and so as we crossfade ahead, we now come to a growing montage of antics as time passes on. The instrumental music of joy has kicked in as the bow bun child runs gleefully around her mother. and naturally causes himself an accident that frightens any new mothers. What you can see quickly going on is all the tropes of parenthood through the ages. It's pretty clear to see. And this is that initial panic when the first thing goes wrong. Easy solution this time though. A little bit of cartoon logic to this cartoon logic circumstance. Love it. Still very cute and fitting that the child seems unfazed by any complications they may face. Following that, we now have the height chart measuring as a child gets taller through the years. Or I guess minutes in this case. And now we're out at the marketplace. Again, shot with this very direct angle on events. It's not necessarily thematic to being an outsider looking in on these events unfolding, nor is it a homage to Wes Anderson or anything, but it's a stylistic choice when it comes to the presentation of this short. And it works quite nicely, no matter what the intention behind it. Starting off at this angle typically before closing in with something new. This time smelling and choosing ingredients. It's also a nice extra little bit of Asian representation as it showcases that this mother chooses to shop locally with Asian vendors. Considering this is Canada, I'm pretty sure there are plenty of big chain supermarkets to choose from, but doing so this way seems more to the ground. As well as of course works on that representation that this whole short is also highlighting. And as this kid is given more agency to pick its own food items, the two enjoy eating together on a local transport bus back home. Sweet. Followed by more activity. With a bit of drama involved. Low to the ground and static still since height is an important factor here. While the whole design of this short is very much thick and low down to the ground. According to the director, this and the fact that there are no perfect straight lines anywhere in the film were included because, quote, we wanted there to be this perfect imperfection in the world to feel more handmade and personal and warm. Nice. <laughs> Anyway, following that, we have the bow bun being comforted after a bad day, with the mother doting on her child and giving all the support she can, including a toothbrush scrub down. It's just what the child needed, some love and affection after a tough day. And so from there, we get more crossfade time dilation as the bow bun rapidly ages from cookies to clothing to visual impairment too. This child has quickly grown into a more mature individual, and with that comes a whole new collection of challenges. What was previously needed support after bad events has now become parental overprotection. Banking off of director Domi Shi's experience as an only child is feeling like an 
overprotected little steamed bun. Our mature little bun wants to play with the other humans, but he's soft and doughy, and the mother says no. Instead, sticking right back to keeping her cutesy child for herself, sticking to her own routines, and expecting the child to just join along. Now more directly invading the mum's space as the kids are playing football in the literal background of the body movements, spaced for the doe child to literally run to the background and join them. But as we come to a new scene at a new angle for football, we see that soft center manifest. The doe blob is too fragile to be playing football games, and the first indication of danger or pain is immediately addressed by the mother. Understandable for the very first time with a baby that can barely support its own weight, but in the context of more aged relationships, this can become more of a negative than a positive on one's child. What was previously a sweet trip on the bus has now become an obvious burden to the child as they are being overdoted by their mother. Adamant to effectively cuddle up to them like the younger days. And though it's a more magical, super sped up version of events, this is very clear parallels to the very real relationships people have had with their parents in all sorts of circumstances. <laughs> And so, now its impact is felt, as now the Bunley baby has fully started their rebellious phase, rejecting their mother's approaches and bringing the loneliness back in a whole new spin. Hey, thanks for making it halfway through the video. If you're liking it so far, subscribe. And if you want more Pixar Shorts content, I made a video ranking them all a couple years back that I'm quite proud of. The script had some extra flair, like trying to use the same letter in words as much as possible for each short, and one had me doing an awful Scottish accent. Maybe skip that one. If you're interested, check it out after this video using the cards in the corner. Now back to bow. Now we're even given non-conventional moments of the daily routine. We've seen the beats of the mother's daily loop, and a simple cooking sesh is not part of the relevant events. But we're on the child's time now, and if he wants to self-serve himself some fizzy drinks in the middle of the day from the fridge, he's more than happy to do so, against his mother's wishes that he can already assume exists. All the while, the set showcases more of the mother holding onto the golden days with that I heart mum note still stuck to the fridge. Classic, and first a point of view shot so that we can see the mother's looming shadow on the door, always wanting to be present, as the mother now at a more off-kilter angle in the hallway responds on this side of the door. Perhaps the camera being off a bit is hinting at her loss of control, or just so you can actually see the depth of the hallway, and as she peers, she's a tiny influence on the frame, hidden behind this frame within a frame, against the collection of iconography of a growing boy and his boily things. Meanwhile, the boy's happiness comes from an external source, and the moment he sees his mother, it's anger and nothing more. POV from the mother's perspective as she is literally unobscuring herself with the door in the frame before it is shut in her face. A strange relationship to say the least, but before barging into the room like she looks to intend to do, perhaps this is a routine for her usually too, she comes up with an alternative idea instead. <laughs> This short has a fixation, and it's not going to skip on an opportunity for more food shots. Although fun fact, they did consciously have to cut down on some food shots after learning that they had an 8 minute time restriction for the whole thing. Makes sense. <laughs> but this is it here, creating a whole delicious looking feast. Again with the hands in focus and then through the mother's eyes, and eventually a close up on the last dish placed before widening out to the whole picture. A table filled to the brim with food. Just as the bow boy separately leaves his room in the background, giving us this super prepared shot as mother offers him a seat at this feastly table. It is her love language. Suddenly we're back to that perfect head on angling, not to mention blooms of warm lighting to really add on that sense of warmth and comfort. It is the best form of a gift she can offer using the best skills she can provide. But the bow boy... Well, he just doesn't have the same perspectives as his mother, and though static, the composition of his shot is a lot darker with colder colours as he's not searching for that familial warmth. Plus, he's got a mini beard now, and with one super swift shot of her reaching out briefly, she's left in the dust. 
choosing to head out the house towards the cool humans and their car shown through the gaping doorframe. And even running up to her son, the kid just puts on sunglasses and glides out of there. She has fully lost control of her child and has no ability to rectify it. And in response, there is anger and angry eating. The lighting now is more harsh as there's no big lights on and the TV is doing most of the heavy lifting. Once again, she has become lonely, being the only active chair at the table. And upon his return, Life moves pretty fast, both literally for the life cycle of this bow bun and probably quite symbolically as a parent. Perhaps this is how fast it feels like they age. The shots are pretty functional here, other than the fact that the mother is on looking at her son's new circumstances through a looking glass with the frame of the door holding all the events separate to her again. And now with that sudden realization, the mother is stun locked, first left behind on her own frame and followed with a close up that expands out to reveal her new daughter-in-law to be. It's all so much of a shock that she's more absorbed by her reaction half the time to witness and recognize the stranger tease outside of her. But as the bow man continues packing up his stuff and saying his goodbyes, he approaches with a more mature outlook as the music switches to a more emotive piano now, rather than the iconic instrumental choices of Chinese influences. He's no longer rolling his eyes at the mere sight of her, and even giving her a little bit of affection with that little leg hug. An appropriate degree of nuanced coddling for a mother he is overall grateful for. But alas, the mother doesn't feel the same. It's all so shocking and so quick that she doesn't know how to respond beyond her gut reaction to stop it. This is all way too fast, and she can't just suddenly be saying goodbye now. But it's yet another negative response from a son who now wants to fob her off. Not a full on tantrum, just a swaying away as if to say, don't embarrass yourself. That only heightens and comes to a head more as she slams the door on him, actively halting his plans and his future, overbearing and controlling in her most invasive move yet. And how does the more matured bundle of stuffing react? Demands, which the mother promptly rejects, doubling down on her stance for her own sake rather than her child's happiness, which boils down to physically trying to obtain that goal, jumping up and over until... With one last chance, the mother is begging for the once little bow baby to not go away, not leave her behind. Regardless of the boy's wants, it's all about her and this one selfish request. They tug and they tug, the mother brewing a tear from it all and all, until eventually... <laughs> Whoa. Glasses left behind, tears streaking down the face. She's done it. She has symbolically self-destructed the relationship she has with her son. Camera-wise, it was high angle on the bow boy and low angle on the mother. Standard height related stuff. Closing in as she began to cry as the intensity brewed in the moment, whilst the climactic moment has a noticeably dark vignette around the edges, as well as possibly the very first camera movement in a shot that's not a zoom. Tracking up a little as the boy is lifted into the mouth before standing back on the mother's post-realization, surrounded by darkness and the frames from the other walls. It's a dark shot for a dark moment as the mother immediately regrets what she's done. <laughs> This twist, while incredible in its own right, is meant to represent, quote, the type of love you would destroy so it would not disappear and go away. Or perhaps more literally, it was based off of a saying that director Domi Shi's mum would say to her that would go as, oh, I wish I could put you back in my stomach so I knew exactly where you were at all times. It's the final self-destructive moment of a parent pushing their child too far, to the point that they have no contact with their child at all, in any form. Gone from full-blown detachment. And as the mother sobs in the hallway, the dim lighting only gets dimmer as she is left in practically a spotlight of self-pity, and we fade to black. This dark ending, by the way, is great, of course. I would say that as a Brit, we love our dark endings, but it almost didn't happen. And it took her mentor, Pete Doctor, telling her not to be, quote, afraid to push it, be as culturally specific as you want to be, unquote to really double down on this twist. Love it. 
And rising out of it again, we now see the mother has cried herself to bed. At a new personal angle again, and of course from a time of the day that's not her usual controlled daily beats. As she sits solemnly in her dim bedroom, alone once again, with just a simple lamp light source to bring some light to her life. But she's not totally alone, there is that husband character as well, coming from another room of full lighting. That's somewhat of a comfort, as much as it's only contained as partially there thanks to that door frame again. But then we hear the front door, and from that door frame comes a familiar silhouette. The bow bun surely can't have returned from her stomach until you realize that it's... Initially looking just like the boy bow, thanks to the mother's poor vision through her tears until the blurring switches us to a human version of the bow boy. Twist number two, it's not about the bow bun coming to life, it's about a real life human son and the real life relationship strain that had already happened between the two of them years ago. The bow bun was just a plot representation of that dynamic, recontextualizing past shots like how there were frames of the three of them since the very beginning and always a third chair empty at the table. But her son is back after who knows how how long? And the mother is still responding angrily to their presence, clearly still affected by these prior events, before best boy dad pushes him into action. We're fully in the bedroom now, glowing door frame no longer assisting in the room as it remains fully dark besides the window at that head on angle. Mm. as the son brings in his own source of light by turning on the lamp and returning the favor in the love language that he knows his mum can understand. Food. Neither want this relationship strain, and so after a couple of touches, they bond together for the first time in possibly years like they used to, sat beside each other eating buns together, sniffling to themselves as they start the process of mending their tattered relationship one step at a time as we watch in on them from outside the window again, no longer just an expression of getting some fresh air and locational context, but to see how the two are working on themselves, their internal issues within the family building. As we now fade ahead to more food shots of course, with those classic hands again and less experienced craftsmanship. It's the boy trying to do it, comforted by his mother to get it right next time. And as she pinches his cheeks yet again, the camera slowly pulls back to see the rest of the table giving it a go, Perfectly. What a surprise. Glad to see the boy inherited his mother's shocked expression. Slightly odd that it's so lopsided you can barely see the father, but maybe it's because they wanted the motion to be slow and gradual. Movements are rare anyway, so it'd be jarring to suddenly swerve around now. And as the group continue to praise and discuss the methods on bun crafting, the camera continues its motion until we return to that classic controlled static angle at the table. No longer featuring empty seats and loneliness, but a family, present and attentive. Maybe not exactly as expected, but welcome and on the mend all the same, as we fade away to the credits with some archaic paper textures to boot. Were people confused by this short? Of course. It's a little abstract in places. Did the girlfriend disappear once she left the door? Was the bow boy even real? No. It was symbolic, more so just an interesting presentation to tell the story of a mother facing empty nest syndrome the depression from their child flying the nest and leaving the parent behind. And there's some odd set piece details that are more akin to Asian or immigrant cultures, like toilet paper on the table instead of kitchen towels, but also plenty of other Easter eggs from it, tin foil around the stove, soy sauce and other spices. And in hindsight, you can spot that this isn't a modern day tale given the designs of the phones and the literal Game Boy on the son's bed. This is a tale from the 90s, as that would be when her child was going through the process of aging as a child. It's a little strange, but once you get it, it's really an incredible piece of storytelling and strikes very close to home for a lot of people. Maybe not literally, but the quick crime of passion is certainly relevant. Thankfully, they didn't include the version where the child is chewed up briefly. That was pitched at one point. And though I personally judged it as my sixth favorite Pixar short ever, spoilers for that part of the plugged video by the way, I think looking at the whole selection, this is probably one of the most impactful and easily stands of one of Pixar's best of the best. 
No wonder this project got itself a full-on Oscar. Also cool to hear that Domi Shi worked on this project alone for two years before bringing in a crew. A real craft of passion, this. Well done. But I think you've heard enough from me rambling about an eight minute short. Let us know if you'd like us to do any other deep dives on Pixar shorts. We did have an old short series that kind of underperformed, but maybe just as seen series options. It could be nice to revisit. And tell me your thoughts on the short as well. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.